affect me. But I think at the time I wasn't really looking for God, but it was just like a comforting thing for me. But yeah. So when, when did the moment of, uh, you know, your personal commitment to the Lord occur? At a nightclub. In a nightclub. In a nightclub. Very unusual spot. Very unusual so spot. So tell me the story. <laughs> Actually, one Saturday night, I met a group of friends. This is after you got out of jail. This is, yeah, oh yeah, this yeah. is after you I came back home. You were in for what, home. 10 months? Um, I got a two year sentence in yeah. Jamaica. Yeah. So it's just after all of that, okay. coming back home, went to a nightclub, you know, got into the club. It was really hot in there, but it's not, I wasn't feeling the heat from, because there was so much people. It was like a different type of heat and it was under my skin. Like I just couldn't get rid of it. And and I mentioned to my friends, I'm going outside, I'll be back. And I sat in my car and that's when it all started. I just started repenting, you know, crying out and saying, God, forgive me. And I remember, you know, as I shared this before that I took one of my mother's suitcase and gave it to a friend. And I said, God, please forgive me for taking my mom's suitcase. So like everything started coming. And then that's when I said, Lord, forgive me for bringing all this drugs in. And then that's when, you know, my journey started. Mm. So uh, did you start attending a church? Yes, I started attending a church and um, I received the Lord. I got baptized and that's where my journey began. You also had some physical challenges, I understand. Did you not have to deal with cancer at some point along the way? Yes, world? I was diagnosed with cancer at the age of 32. And um, that year I missed my daughter's graduation. And um, yeah, I thought, uh, doctors thought I was gonna make it, but we know who God is, that he's able to heal. So I'm totally healed from cancer, like over 15 years now. Wow. Yeah. So instead of um, withdrawing, uh, and living uh, a lonely life, you decided to do something with your experience and with your heart for other people. And you established a ministry called Friends with a Heart. Yes. T t tell me about that. Friends with a Heart, that kind of birthed out of my experience at Prison Fellowship Canada. And I believe that once God has brought you through something, He doesn't bring you through something and deliver you through from it just to sit down with it. So now He's equipped me and anointed me and empowered me to go back to the very place of defeat where I thought was defeat and to help others come out of that. So Friends with a Heart Outreach International, what we're doing is um, encouraging men and women that you can rise above your situation and it goes beyond that it goes to building a relationship looking out for their children because when we commit these crimes whether it be drug trafficking murder rape whatever it's the children that suffer you know and they get dragged into it so we want to be able to be that um, in between between them and another group of drug traffickers between them and prostitution between them and you know all these other things so that's what our role is so you visit prisons yes and, and uh, is it difficult to gain access? No, it's not. Um, I have access to majority of the institutions here in Canada. I actually go into the Grand Valley twice a week. I'll also halfway houses. Um, once you're out of the system and you get a pardon, you're able to go in. So, And, and women uh, obviously would... Uh have respect for you because uh, they would find out about your your record and your experience, right? Yes, and and that's the edge that I have, is yeah. that I speak on both sides. Yeah. I speak on, as an ex-offender, knowing the needs, knowing what it's like to be rejected, knowing what it's like to be abandoned, and also now on the other side where, you know, the role that I play now, it just brings a lot of hope to them that, yes, you know what, I can actually, if God can do it for Vivian, he can do it for me, so that's, do you ever go back to uh, the prison that you were incarcerated in, in Jamaica? Yes, I did. I actually do ministry there as well. Really? Yes. What is that like? The first time I went, honestly, I felt like I was the president <laughs> of some nation because it was just the reception was different. You know, instead of them being in shackles, you know, they were actually walking behind me. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Showing me everything. And, you know, we've adopted the school there. Um, we've adopted the hairdressing and also the dressmaking, you know, so it was, I spoke to the women, they relate to me. Some of them remember me because they're still there. Um, and it just brings some sense of, you know what? There's still hope, yeah. you know, so. Now you, you take teams. Yes. I think we got a couple of pictures here actually. Uh, uh, there we go. Tell me about this. This is a group of um, children of um, offenders. Um, we celebrate Christmas in Jamaica in February. So what we did was we sponsored these children and in the bags are their Christmas gifts from us. Oh really? And this is in the park, in Emancipation Park in Kingston, Jamaica. And mm. that's the caregivers along with the children. Mm. So you have grandmothers and you have um, nieces and nephews there. Now, are these children of prisoners? Yes. Ah. They're all, either their mom or their dad is incarcerated. Wow.
What's the reaction of the kids? Oh, they're just overwhelmed. Like, um, they love the gifts. They were, the, um, the caregivers are crying um, because they don't know us, you know, and yeah. for us to show so much love and so much interest in the children, like, it was amazing. A final question. Uh, the church, you know, by its biblical mandate, is committed to visiting the prisoner. Mm -hmm. uh, what kind of um, reaction and or response do you get from your church personally and other churches that you visit with regard to your work? Response is great. Um, Lights and Life actually, right now, Lights and Life Ministries, they, um, the prison ministry team has sponsored the female institution. So we provide um, hygiene products, um, school supplies, um, books and stuff like that to that institution. I find that a lot of churches right now are coming on board. Actually at Kingsway Community um, Life Center, they're on board as well. Um, um, working alongside them with their outreach ministry and their prison ministry. So, like, churches are actually seeing the need. Well, that's terrific, Vivian. Uh, what a great story. Uh, it really does bring hope. And at this yes. time of the year, uh, it, it must be a time when hope is especially valued in prisons, right? Yes, definitely, yeah. and needed. And this is the most difficult time for them. Oh, sure. Well, thanks, and God bless you in your work. Yes, That's, that's terrific. You. We uh, are really honored to be able to feature people like Vivian here on 100 Huntley Street, and uh, it is live and it's national. It has.